In this example, we're going to drive up a hill, but we're not going to ignore friction. We now are going to account for friction. So now how much power is required to drive up this hill? It's a three degree hill. It's about a five, five and a half percent hill. Uh, at 25 miles per hour, which is almost six, I mean miles per hour, 25 meters per second, which is almost 60 miles per hour. And uh, if the friction is taken into account, how much power does it take now for the car to make it up that hill? So again, what we have to realize is that in this case, the power required will be both in uh, the need to increase the potential energy of the car is driving up the hill at a constant speed. The kinetic energy isn't changing, but the potential energy is changing. So you need power to gain potential energy, and then you need power to overcome this friction force. So we can then say that uh, the power required is equal to the amount of energy required to increase, or the amount of energy, yeah, the amount of power required to increase the energy of the car. So that would be the uh, work done per unit time, which is equal to the change in the potential energy of the car per unit time, plus the force required to overcome friction, which would be force times distance over time. So this is to increase the potential energy, and this term is to overcome friction. All right, so now let's plug in some more information here. Of course, the increase in the potential energy would be the increase in MGH. So this would be equal to the change in the MGH divided by the amount of time that has elapsed plus the force times the distance. Now notice that distance over time is velocity, so it would be the force times the velocity. So we can figure out how much power we need to overcome friction by simply multiplying the force, 5,000 newtons, times the velocity of the car to get that power required. And then here, since MG is a constant, we can write this as MG times the change in height over the time elapsed plus the force times velocity. So now we still have to figure out how fast the car is gaining height. So that is of course related through, we can say this is our delta H over delta time. And of course here, velocity is equal to the change in X over the change in time. And how these two are related to each other, of course, is through the angle. If this is the opposite side and this is a hypotenuse, we can say that the sine of theta is equal by definition to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So we can say that the opposite side, which is what we're looking for, delta H delta T, is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. Now, of course, the hypotenuse is delta X delta T times the sine of theta. The opposite side will be delta H delta T. And of course, delta X delta T again is velocity. So delta H delta T, the rate at which the car gains height is equal to the velocity times the sine of the angle theta. All right, so then that can go in here. So this becomes mg. Instead of delta H delta T, we write V sine theta. And then we add to that the power required to overcome the friction. Now we're ready to plug in the numbers. And so this is equal to the mass of the car, 2,000 kilograms times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Multiply times the velocity of the car, 25 meters per second. Then multiply times the sine of the angle, sine of three degrees. Of course, this would be the amount required for the car to gain height. We add to that the force to overcome friction. So you have to have an equal force pushing that uh, friction force, which is 5,000 newtons. Multiply times the velocity of the car, 25 meters per second. All right. And that would, of course, be the portion the power required to overcome the friction. Now let's work this out. So we have 2,000 times 9.8 times 25 times the sine of 3 degrees equals, and we get 25,645 watts. So 25,645 watts plus the power to overcome friction, 5,000 times 25. That would be, whoo! 125,000 watts. And now you can see, I don't know how realistic it is, but it's usually known that overcoming friction and wind resistance, which is a form of friction, of course, it usually takes a lot more power to do that than to actually gain height up going up a hill at that speed. So at that point, you can see if we then add to that 25,645 watts, the total required is a little, a little over 150,000 watts.
Of course, dividing it by 746, and we end up with 202 horsepower. Remember that one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. So when we use that conversion, 202 horsepower, and not every car has that much horsepower available, and so that means not, not all cars can go up a hill at 25 meters per second when the hill has an angle of three degrees. So that's kind of a practical example of how we find the power required to go up a hill, taking into account the friction or the wind resistance that we have to overcome. And that's how we do that.